welcome to the video. My name is Charles and I'm going to share with you five calorie hacks that I consistently have used that have helped me to lose 40 pounds while actually eating more food than I ever did before. And I've maintained my weight loss for coming up five years, which is a huge accomplishment for me considering I spent 10 years yo-yo dieting, losing and then gaining the weight back. So this really does work. And I know a lot of people can lose weight when they actually go vegan. That was not the case for me. I was a healthy vegan. You can see this picture of me here for a long time while actually being overweight. And this is what I look like now, which is pretty cool that I can actually maintain this after having two kids. I'm also gonna share with you my three rules to live by or principles. I, I hate rules, I'm a bit of a rebel. But these are principles that I use to navigate cravings, emotional eating, when I'm on my period, and that they actually keep me consistent enough, which is all you need, to actually maintain that loss and know that I'm gonna be able to maintain it for the rest of my life. Spoiler alert, I'm also going to be eating pizza in this video and showing you how I lower the calories in that because this is the real test. It's being able to stay consistent enough not having to be perfect 100% of the time with your diet so that you can do it for the long haul. If you have to white knuckle a diet, it doesn't matter how effective it is, you're going to gain that weight back. But before we get into that fun stuff, we need to go over some weight loss 101. This is the golden rule of fat loss and that is that you must be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. All this means is that you are eating less calories than your body needs and so it is forced to dip into your stored fat cells and that's what depletes them. It doesn't matter what those actual numbers are, they're gonna be different for different people. What matters is that you are lowering the calories from your current starting point if you are maintaining your weight because that's gonna create a deficit. There are many ways to get into a calorie deficit like calorie counting, intermittent fasting, raw till four, the starch solution, a high carb, keto, they all work by lowering your overall calories. But personally, I've tried most of these things and I always gained the weight back because I was always hungry in some way. So the biggest thing that changed for me to lose the 40 pounds was understanding something called calorie density. And that allowed me to eat more food while lowering my calories at the same time. Now it sounds magical and it kind of is. So calorie density is just the amount of calories in a given weight of food. Let's say it's a pound. And so the way that I find it easiest to visualize the differences in calorie density is to picture that you have two jars of money. So in one jar you've got coins and the jar is filled to the brim with coins. In the other jar you've got $5, $20 or $100 notes. I don't have $100 notes to fill a jar so I just put in some fives. So these two jars, while one of them is very heavy and the other one is very light, they have vastly different values. And so if I was going to say, hey, you can pick one of these jars and take it away, most sane people would choose the one that has the notes as opposed to the coins, even though the coins are heavier and there's more material involved in actually creating that jar of coins. It doesn't matter that there's more raw material or weight in the coin jar, what matters to us is that there's more value in the lighter jar that has those notes. And this is the same kind of thing when it comes to calories and food. There are some foods that while they are very, very heavy and there's a lot of food there, they are very low in calories. Their calorie value is extremely low. While there are other foods that are very small in weight and volume that have a huge value when it comes to calories. I just got my steps in <laughs> from doing this. And the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in terms of calorie density in foods can be 40 times. It's huge. So even though I've eaten huge delicious meals and I can go back for seconds and sometimes people comment on how many potatoes I eat, it looks like there's a lot of food there, but because my calorie density is very low in the foods that I choose, I'm able to eat like this and maintain this weight loss. I remember in my early 20s trying to eat 1200 calories a day and going to bed at 8 p.m. because it was the only way I could fight the gnawing hunger. Yeah, I lost weight, I was also a miserable, tired, horrible person to be around and I gained the weight back when I didn't want to do those things anymore. So this is not just a short-term strategy, it's a long-term strategy for actually keeping the weight off, which in my mind is the most important part of this. 
calorie density is how I lost the 40 pounds. And I am going to share for you these five hacks, but understanding the three calorie density principles is going to help you to know what to do in any situation. The first principle of calorie density is water content. The more water that you have in a food, the lower the calories. Things like soups, vegetables, which are 95% water, fruits, anything that is cooked with a lot of water, like whole grains or rice, those things are naturally going to be lower in calories for the simple fact that water doesn't have any calories. So the density of calories is going to be less. And the foods that are naturally high in water, like fruits and vegetables and potatoes, are the lowest in calories. The second rule of calorie density is fiber. Fiber is just this undigestible matter inside of plants that your body can't break down. And so because your body can't break it down, it can't get at the calories, meaning that it lowers the calorie density because there's bulk created that doesn't have calories absorbed. And when you're eating whole foods, you're eating more roughage, you're eating more volume because the fiber is still there. And when you combine fiber with water, you can actually stay fuller for longer. It creates this amazing kind of gel in your stomach. And the problem of highly processed foods is that the water and the fiber has been removed, but the calories remain the same. So you think about something like sugar beets, which is the original version of sugar or sugar cane. You start with this huge amount of food. You think about something like beets. If you had kilos and kilos or pounds and pounds and pounds of those, if you had a truck full of those, you have to start with so much raw material and then you remove the fiber, you remove the water, you keep breaking that down until you're left with this very small amount of, of sugar. It's a crystalline substance that's had the fiber and the water removed. The problem is, is that the calories in that are the same for if you had that huge volume that you started with. You've just removed all of the things that were diluting those calories, the fiber and the water. I don't have any sugar beets, but I do have some parsnips, which are pretty much the skin of your cousin, right? You can see in these two examples when we've got sugar versus parsnips, there is a lot more roughage or a lot more volume if you were to eat all of those parsnips versus how easy it is to overeat on that sugar because you're not filling up your stomach with the extras. The third principle of calorie density is macronutrients. Carbs and protein have four calories per gram, whereas fat has nine calories per gram. So automatically, something that is predominantly fat is gonna be more calorie dense than its carbohydrate or protein brother or alternative or counterpart, whatever you wanna call it. So the more fat content, the less water and the less fiber in a food, the higher in calories it's going to be. The more water, the less fat, and the more fiber you have, the lower in calories it's going to be. If you look at this cookie for 500 calories and you compare the same amount of kiwi fruit that you get for 500 calories, it's very clear why it's so easy to overeat calories when we're eating a lot of processed food or even just a small amount. I did say we we're going to order a pizza, so let's do that now. Nick, can you please order me a vegan godfather pizza from Domino's. Right. Cool. Putting these three principles together, I'm gonna to show you what this practically looks like. The number one hack is to just cook without oil. Oil is the highest calorie dense food on the planet for all the reasons that I've described. It has no water, even though it looks liquid. It has had all of the fiber removed and it is a fat source. So it is the highest calorie food. There is no other way that you can make it higher in calories. I like to water saute or I'll use my air fryer without any oil. I can bake potatoes and vegetables just using baking paper. The more that you can minimize oil in your diet, and when I say minimize oil, I'm not saying don't eat fat sources, just not the highest condensed calorie wise ones like oil. The second principle is to cook with a ton of vegetables. Why? Because they are 95% water and they have all the fiber still intact, which makes them the lowest calorie foods on the planet. And this is the biggest reason that I can eat such big portions is that I am adding a ton of vegetables. I love using uh, broccoli. I have a broccoli steamer, which makes it really easy. Whenever I'm cooking things, if I'm cooking something like a stir fry or making sushi bowls, if I am cooking risotto or making some kind of salad, I'm always adding in a ton of non-starchy vegetables to that recipe. 
my personal goal is to add about half non-starchy vegetables which are things like broccoli brussels sprouts celery carrots basically anything that's not a beet or a potato add those to my recipes as i'm cooking and then the rest of that is going to be some kind of starchy sauce this lowers the calories while upping the volume meaning i can go back for seconds bonus if you want to lower your calories even more then use this extra bonus hack that we use with our clients inside of my program lean with plants weigh out a pound of vegetables every day and then as you are eating your meals use that pound as a side to them or snacks throughout the day this is going to mean that you're lowering your calories even more because you're eating even more vegetables still cook with them all right you can do both and if you want to know exactly how to put meals together that are optimized for fat loss then i shared that in my four step framework so you can watch that video here number three is to make a lot of soups and stews that are using vegetables <laughs> because you are adding more water which is meaning that you are lowering the calorie density and you're also getting in tons and tons of veggies because it's so much easier to eat things like leek and celery and all of those wilty veggies that are in the fridge neglected in a soup than it is to force yourself to eat them raw this is one of the biggest things i did at the start of my weight loss journey this is a picture of me when i very first started the potato reset eating some kind of veggie medley potatoey stew and you can see a huge difference in my face from then to now and a big reason was just because i ate a ton of soups and stews number four is to reduce those high calorie processed foods by adding more low calorie foods this is why i ordered the pizza what are you thinking <laughs> i'm waiting for you to finish the video <laughs> so that you can eat pizza so i can Look eat at a that. Piece of pizza like we have vegan dominoes in new zealand which is pretty cool an entire Domino's pizza is not actually super big and while it's delicious it's nearly 1600 calories. I mean I don't know about you but I've had many a time where I've eaten an entire pizza to myself. And you may be thinking well Charles I would never eat an entire pizza to myself. I'd have half of that pizza at most. That's still nearly 800 calories and for most people you're still going to feel pretty hungry after eating that because it's really just not a lot of food in terms of volume. But if I was to eat a quarter of this pizza, it's only 400 calories. Now that's not going to fill me up on its own. I will definitely be peckish for other things. I will be eating more than that. I'll have some garlic bread. I will go and have some ice cream and some snacks and it'll send me on a binge for sure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that meal way, way more filling and lower the calorie density by adding some vegetables and potatoes. So while I'm waiting for the dominoes, I'm going to cook up some broccoli in my steamer. I'm going to cook up about half a pound-ish of broccoli. And I'm also going to do these two small potatoes, which only work out to about 125 calories. So I've got about 80 90 calories for the broccoli, about 125 for the potato, about 400 for a quarter of this pizza, which means that the entire meal comes out to about 600 calories, which is pretty much in the realm that you want to be for weight loss anyway. I'm not giving up on my diet. I'm not making the best choices, but it's so much better than I was if I was to eat the 1600 calories of the entire pizza. Number five is to get used to reading labels and choosing the lower calorie versions of your favorite foods. And I think this is one of the most important hacks if you're someone who struggles with any kind of consistency and you tend to make amazing, wonderful choices, you're perfect with your diet, but then you end up binging. This is about flattening those big dips in terms of your consistency so that you can reduce your overall calories because you're not having as big of a binge on the weekends or when you give up on your diet. This is gonna help it feel more flexible. We probably all know that ice cream is not amazing for weight loss, but if I am gonna eat some ice cream and nice cream made of bananas is simply not gonna cut it, when I go to the supermarket, I'm gonna look for a lower calorie dense ice cream than the highest one I could possibly buy. And spoiler alert, Ben and Jerry's, I love ya, but you are the highest calorie ice cream I have ever encountered. 
And you can see with these two brands, simply because I looked at the labels and I compared the amount of calories in the same weight of food or in the serving, which happened to be very similar, fortunately. Either way, I'm making an empowered choice rather than giving up on my diet. I've got two types of crackers here. As you can imagine, crackers are super high in calories because they have had the fiber removed and they are really dry, so they don't have a high water content. But one of these packets has got oil and one of them is oil free. So the one that has oil is going to automatically be much higher in calories than the one that doesn't. So while this is not an amazing choice for weight loss, if you are going to have crackers, choose the one that is oil free. Can you see how using these principles allows you to make empowered decisions for those nuanced moments instead of having to follow rules all the time? I would say that's a benefit. Not using these principles is the biggest reason that I see people gain weight back because they're either perfect with their diet, they're following all the rules correctly, but then they go and they binge. This strategy with understanding these principles has allowed me to stay consistent in those moments where I am going to choose ice cream because I'm not ever giving up. I'm doing the best I can because I'm planning for my worst moments, not just my best. So to recap, these five hacks are simply how I reduce my overall calories because I understand the three calorie density principles. Water content of food, the amount of fiber in a food, and whether it is high in carbs or high in fat. Macronutrients, essentially. So just ask yourself, how can I add more water in the form of vegetables to my meals, and how can I reduce oil and those high calorie processed foods? And to help you remember these principles, I've got a very simple acronym, which is WWCD. Let me know in the comments if you remember the What Would Jesus Do bracelets that were all the rage in the 90s. I definitely had some. People would wear the bracelets to try and remind themselves to act like Jesus, be kind, not judge, all of these different things. But what I want you to think about is W, water, W, whole foods, fiber intact, carbs, choose carbs over fat, duh, WWCD. You can also think about what would Chelsea do? Water, whole foods, carbs. Duh. That's it for me today and let me know in the comments which of these five hacks you found most helpful. And if you want to see the other five vegan hacks that I have made in order to lose weight, then you can watch this video next. I'll see you next week for a, another video and go and eat some vegetables and think what would Chelsea do? Alright, bye!